Hey there everybody, it's Ryan here from Cataclysm Now. And tonight I just wanted to look at sorting Pacific War, the struggle against Japan, 1941 through 1945 uh, with you all. Finally got everything punched. And, um, you know, this is really my first monster game. So organization was paramount. Um, as you can see, we have um, a litany of scenarios. So unlike, well, I don't have really many points of comparison in terms of monster games, but a lot of other titles either that I own or I know of, their setups aren't, um, you know, they've got limited setups, two or three campaign games, smaller scenarios. Um, but as we can see here, uh, there's eight engagement scenarios. There are 12 battle scenarios, there are nine campaign scenarios, and then there's five strategic scenarios. So obviously we can't sort by scenario just because there's so much overlap in terms of the forces that are engaged um, that you would just, you would need dozens of copies of counters to do that. So I opted um, to do counter trays. Um, so the first thing just to say is even though this is a four inch box, um, it's got mounted maps. Not everything's going to fit in the box. So you're going to have to dedicate separate storage for just your counters, essentially, because um, there's a bevy of charts uh, and rule books. And uh, like I said, the maps are mounted, so it's not going to fit in there. But we're going to just talk about sorting the counters. That's sort of maybe a different topic or a different video in terms of um, storing everything uh, together. So uh, it comes, the game comes with 10 counter sheets. And uh, like I said, I went with five uh, counter trays to store everything. Um, and there was a bit of a, a, a learning curve or a bit of a difficulty in terms of not knowing the rules inside and out. Um, hopefully the sort and the sort of segregation of the different types of counters uh, will match up with what some of the rules are. Um, I also went out and bought uh, a label maker. Um, I got this off of Amazon. It was like 30 bucks. Um, I can't remember the brand. Um, but it's nice because it's after events of Bluetooth. It's connected to an app. Uh, you can type in your labels and uh, print and there you go. So that worked. And another reason I went with labels for this is just because, again, if I'm going to get this to the table, even to play solitaire, um, I have to cut down the amount of sorting um, and have some sort of efficiency for that. So I'll just go through each of the counter sheets, show you how, or each of the counter trays, show you how I uh, sorted them. Um, and uh, hopefully that's helpful or it can be uh, a little bit of inspiration um, if sorting uh, Pacific War uh, is uh, daunting uh, in the least. So we will start with um, basically uh, Japanese land forces because the Japanese have a lot more land forces than the United States dedicated to the theater, mostly because they're fighting um, uh, a protracted war in China. They divided them up based off of size. So we've got uh, we've got divisions, regiments, brigades, battalion. We've got imperial uh, HQ, submarkers, uh, strategic markers. Um, these were kind of just random uh, construction torpedoes, and then sorting the imperial Japanese army um, air forces, um, the L1, L0, etc. That's their uh, basically their efficiency rating or how experienced the pilots are and how good the, air, uh, the aircraft are because this is on a strategic level. Um, each uh, air counter is about a wing. So every step I think is 12 to 15 aircraft um, and each counter has six steps. So do the math there. It's about an, it's about an, air, uh, an air wing. Uh, there's some weather tokens there. So sometimes there's a w weird pockets, um, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, everything was sort of filled. I didn't want to waste any space just because um, it's prime real estate with these five. 
Now I went on to do, um, now this is mostly uh, US uh, Air, US Army Air. Uh, so again, we have the different levels. Uh, so L0 Tactical, L0 Fighter, L1 Bomber, and they go up. Long Range Aircraft, uh, Sorting UK. It's not technically United Kingdom, it's a mixture of uh, Australian, New Zealand, British, etc. We've got the small Chinese Air Force, Dutch Air Force. Uh, and then, like I said, there's not a large U.S. Uh, land component um, in the Pacific. So all the engineers in U.S. armies could eventually, they essentially fit into these two uh, allied fortresses and uh, some supply counters there. And we move on to the Imperial Japanese Navy. And now, obviously, did the sort based off of um, ship type, battleships, carriers, uh, we got destroyers, destroyer escorts, cruisers, light cruisers, um, IGN uh, or IJN uh, amphib. When it came to the task forces, uh, task forces are for naval. Did one through twenty um, instead of just throwing them all into one bag, and then forces are for land, um, and so delineate those out by twenty. Um, Imperial Japanese naval infantry. And then, well, of course, we've got the carrier air groups. Follow that up, we have the U.S. Navy, which, um, as you would uh, suspect, has uh, a lot more preponderance of firepower and ships, a lot more carriers, um, cruisers, light cruisers, etc. The same genre of ships, so to speak. Uh, a lot more air power. Uh, and then we've got their own uh, naval infantry component, the United States Marine Corps. Then we've got the Allied uh, fleet. So that, again, that's a mixture of the Royal Navy, um, New Zealand, Australia, some Dutch um, thrown in there, and then the uh, UK uh, carrier group. And then for the last counter sheet, um, it was just a weird mix. Um, we have the US, the Allied task forces, um, one through 40 for them. They've got because they have a larger navy, they've got more task force markers. Uh, and then for the force, one through 80. And then a breakdown of the rest of the Allied Army. Uh, Allied armies, Dutch, UK. Um, they even break them down. There's a large contingency of um, Indian units, Australian units, New Zealand units. And then a bunch of other markers for the strategic um, campaign. National Chinese. You include the Communist Chinese. It'll be interesting how those... Um, units interact and how those rules play out. Um, but because not everything fits into five counter sheets um, and I wanted a little more accessibility, I went to baggies for um, the rest of the counters. Uh, so the big obvious ones are, uh, we've got Japanese air and sea bases and then allied uh, air and sea bases. I got uh, uh, damage markers. These are applicable to essentially any step, naval, uh, air, or land. Um, ops complete. Um, I think this is for interdiction or ops. Um, this could maybe a fit into a counter tray, but it's got its own little baggie. Uh, additional control markers. We've got uh, kamikazes I put in a separate bag. Uh, we've got activation tokens. Or tokens of counters for ground movement and battle cycles and then um, without again having played the game uh, these counters seem to stick out in terms of that they're needed for essentially any operation or any battle so long range airstrikes reactions etc so this would be a nice you know bag to pull out basically when you're playing any of the scenarios uh, and then these last two are just they're interesting I there was uh, some weird French units, um, the Richelieu and the Triumphant, and then the Tirpitz. Um, I haven't looked in the scenario real quick, but I'm not sure why the Tirpitz would drive in the Pacific. So I put a alt, alt naval, alternative naval, in the baggie. And then again, just because I don't want them lost in the sort, uh, these are uh, US uh, night fighters, which is a nice little touch. Um, and then a random P 51. So um, that's basically the broad sort um, for the game. Again, um, 
Again, this is not meant to be exhaustive, uh, not having yet played the game, um, but I know that if I'm going to effectively bring it to the table and give it the time that it deserves, um, the an effective sort is uh, necessary. So I've gone down the insane rabbit hole of getting a label maker. Um, in most games I've played so far, either the sort, like I said, is um, it doesn't really matter, or even if you do set it, if it takes a while to set up, you do it once and you move on. Um, but if I'm going to be bouncing between engagement uh, scenarios, which I plan on doing all those, and then into the battle, and just sort of scaling up and, and learning the game gradually, um, this is absolutely necessary. So uh, just know that if if the size of the box and the amount of pieces and the amount of rule books didn't uh, scare the hell out of you uh, before, um, there is a sane, uh, efficient way um, to approach it. Um, so yeah, hopefully, again, that was helpful um, in terms of uh, inspiring different ideas um, for the rest of you to sort uh, Mark Herman's specific war. So uh, if you're still watching, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll go ahead and catch you guys on the next one.